Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Tony Camella, physical therapist with E3 Rehab. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a basic framework for rehabilitating acute hamstring strains based on a 2020 article by Hickey and colleagues. Authors compared a pain-free exercise group to a pain threshold group during the rehabilitation of acute hamstring strains in 43 men who primarily played Australian football. The pain-free group could only perform and progress exercise if there was zero pain, while the pain threshold group could perform and progress exercises with a pain rating of four or less out of 10. Number of days from injury to return to play, knee flexor strength, biceps femoris fascicle length, fear of movement, and re-injury occurrence at six months were compared between groups. Each group completed the same hamstring rehabilitation, which included hamstring-specific exercises and a return to running program. All athletes started by performing three hamstring exercises two days a week, a bilateral hamstring bridge for three sets of 10 to 12 repetitions, a bilateral 45 degree hip extension for three sets of eight to 10 repetitions, and a bilateral eccentric slider for three sets of six to eight repetitions. If they were able to complete three sets of a given exercise within the repetition range at an appropriate pain level, they were able to progress. The bilateral hamstring bridge progressed to one leg for three sets of 10 to 12 repetitions on each leg, the bilateral 45 degree hip extension progressed to one leg for three sets of six to eight repetitions on each side, and bilateral eccentric sliders were progressed to two different exercises, a single leg eccentric slider for three sets of four to six repetitions on each leg, and the Nordic hamstring exercise for three sets of four to six repetitions. If athletes were able to perform three sets within the repetition range at an appropriate pain level, they progressed by adding weight to these exercises. In addition to these exercises, athletes simultaneously performed a nine stage progressive running protocol with each stage broken up into an acceleration phase, hold phase, and deceleration phase. Each athlete started at stage one. If they were able to complete three repetitions at a given stage, while staying within their pain criteria, they would progress to the next stage. However, they were not allowed to complete more than nine repetitions per training session. An athlete was determined eligible for return to play once four criteria were met. No pain on palpation to the injured muscle, no pain during active knee extension or passive straight leg test with range of motion at 90% or greater compared to the uninjured leg, no pain during maximum effort isometric knee flexion contraction at zero degrees, zero degrees, and 90 degrees, 90 degrees of hip and knee flexion, and no pain or apprehension during sprint at 100% of perceived maximal intensity. When comparing pain-free and pain threshold groups, authors found the time from injury to return to play were similar at a median of 15 days and 17 days respectively. Biceps for Morris fascicle length improved significantly in both groups by return to play clearance. However, at a two month follow up, this improvement was greater in the pain threshold group. Isometric knee flexor strength improved in both groups by return to play, but at 90 degrees of hip flexion and 90 degrees of knee flexion, it was significantly greater in the pain threshold group at return to play and at a two month follow up compared to the pain free group. Both groups saw a similar reduction in fear at return to play and a two month follow up. And finally, at a six month follow up, only two athletes in each group sustained a re injury. Authors concluded that pain avoidance during hamstring strain injury rehabilitation may not be necessary, and allowing pain during exercise can adequately address deficits associated with acute hamstring strains. Typically, acute muscle strains are treated conservatively meaning rehab and exercises are to be performed pain-free. However, there's emerging evidence to suggest that this might not be necessary and allowing individuals to perform exercises up to an acceptable pain threshold may even be more advantageous for certain outcome measures. If you're someone recovering from an acute hamstring strain or even a chronic hamstring injury, let's look at how we can apply this information to your rehab. Pain. Completely avoiding pain during hamstring rehab may not be necessary, 
Of course, this depends on a variety of factors, but this suggests that performing and progressing exercise while staying at a four or less out of 10 may still lead to desired outcomes. Exercises. For hamstring specific rehab, here are some considerations for exercise selection. Exercises should be challenging and target the hamstrings through hip extension and knee flexion at moderate to long muscle lengths. They should include eccentrics and eventually include a unilateral or single leg component. Here are some examples. A hamstring bridge following a progression from double leg to single leg to weighted. Perform three sets of 10 to 12 repetitions. A 45 degree hip extension following a progression from double leg to single leg to weighted. Perform three sets of six to 10 repetitions. Eccentric hamstring sliders following a progression from double leg to single leg to weighted. Perform these for three sets of four to eight repetitions. Additionally, you may consider performing a more challenging eccentric exercise, such as the Nordic hamstring curl. Perform this for three sets of four to six repetitions. These exercises should be performed two to three days a week, allowing for at least one day of rest between sessions to allow for adequate recovery. So to summarize, although conventional rehab guidelines for acute hamstring strains typically recommend performing and progressing exercises only if there is no pain, there is some evidence to suggest this might not be necessary. And following an exercise progression with acceptable levels of pain can still lead to desired outcomes. In addition, appropriately challenging exercises which target the hamstrings during hip extension and knee flexion at moderate to long muscle lengths and have an eccentric focus should be a top priority during hamstring rehabilitation. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you found it helpful. If you could do us a huge favor, tap that like button, subscribe, and even turn on notifications. If you have any questions or even suggestions for future content, just drop those down in the comments below. Until next time.